What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to Reacts. Uh, we had 200k yesterday or this morning. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. And I know I have been kind of slacking over here, but I, I made a promise on Twitter that we here and we here to stay. So last week we uploaded a video where I was reacting to, I think it was uh, trade targets or something for the offseason. Y'all seem to enjoy that video. So here we are reacting to another uh, another article. We will get back to highlights and stuff, but, you know, di diversify a little bit. So ranking NBA's top 15 point guards this season. So in my mind, when I hear somebody say this season, I'm throwing out the entire resume. I don't care if you did this and that three years ago, two years ago, or even last year. But based on your production this year, this is how you rank. So it should be fun. Shout out to Andy Bailey and Dan Favell. Uh, links in the description to the entire, entire article. If you wanted to pause and actually read, we're just going to be reacting to the names and stuff associated with it. Leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Let's get into it. Uh, Lucas considered a point guard. Now, I wonder if they're going to consider LeBron a point guard. Because I think on basketball reference, they may have LeBron listed as a point guard. So I'm interested. I'm interested. Of course, Dame is going to be up there because this season, Dame is ridiculous. Ridiculous. 15 through 11, we have Spencer Dinwiddie, D'Angelo Russell, Fred Van Vliet, Eric Bledsoe, and De'Aaron Fox. I'm trying to think about, do I have any, again, just based off this season, D'Angelo Russell's pretty low here, right? But remember, it is based off this season, and D'Angelo Russell's put in a weird situation where, of course, he ended up with the Warriors, and they had this injury, that injury, then they start bringing in G League players to play alongside him, so his overall impact wasn't really saw. Uh, because he was playing with just such a bad roster. And then, unfortunately for him, and I guess for us too, we didn't really get to see him much with Carl Towns because of the season got suspended. And even before that, uh, Carl Towns had been dealing with some, some different injuries here and there. So we didn't really get to see D'Angelo Russell in a situation like the year before where he was an all-star and stuff and he was leading the playoff team. So I can understand him being relatively low on the list for, again, just looking at this season alone. Do I look like a ghost with my white shirt in this white background? Eh, we're fine. Spencer Dinwiddie, though. Spencer Dinwiddie's having a very, a very, very good season, man. Um, I love his progression throughout his career. Coming from a guy that was in the, the D League, G League area, getting away from this team, Summer League here and there, to actually being like a legitimate player where like he can impact so many games. Uh, he's closed out a decent amount of games for them when Kyrie Irving was sitting out uh, with his injuries and stuff. So 15, Spencer Dinwiddie, 14, D'Angelo Russell, similar to what I said. Steph Curry and James Harden are the only players in NBA history with a season that have matched seven assists and almost four threes per 75 possessions. So, again, they're saying, like, hey, D'Angelo Russell's good, but this year it's been kind of a struggle. Fred Van Vliet is a surprising one here. Uh, he became a full-time starter is what it says here, and, I mean, he has helped the Raptors. You got to think about Fred Van Vliet is similar to Cal Lowry in the way that if you look at his individual statistics, like, oh, he averages this many points, assists, and rebounds, it may not jump off the page to you, but when you watch the Toronto Raptors, you see the impact that these two guards, small guards, have. Whether they're playing together, they're playing separated. I love watching the Toronto Raptors play. Shout out to Freddie. Uh, I'm going to claim him as a Chicagoan, even though I think he's from Rockford, Illinois, specifically. Uh, when he's on the floor, Toronto allows 105.9 points per 100 possession. Uh, Mark ranks 87 percentile. His in-your-face defense. I mean, in the in the finals last year, he had a lot of the Steph Curry assignment. He had a couple very good defensive possessions against Steph Curry. So, great. Eric Bledsoe. Um, Eric Bledsoe's always going to be in conversations for around this realm between, like, 15 and 12. I think 12 is probably the highest we'll see him um, because his defense. His defense alone just puts him up there. Um, and his offense is too shabby either. Fact. In fact, after a few years alongside MVP caliber Giannis Bledsoe might be a bit underrated on that end. I can I can see what he's saying. I can see what they're saying because it's more than one um one author here. Uh, I can see what they're saying because his role is kind of minuscule in the grand scheme of their offense. I think he could be a more impactful player on the offensive side of the ball based on his previous history. But the defense alone, there's a reason why the Milwaukee Bucks is one of the top defenses in the league. It's not just Giannis. It's not just Brook Lopez. It's not just Dante DiVincenzo. It's like the whole collective just really tied in and just playing great defense. De'Aaron Fox. Now, De'Aaron Fox missed a, a decent amount of the beginning of the season. I think it, it was an ankle injury. Now, De'Aaron Fox is one of my favorite point guards in the NBA. Um, and I was hoping, I'm going to be honest with you, I was hoping his production would be a lot better this season. I was hoping he would take that next jump like some of the other younger point guards did this year. But I cannot be mad at his production, especially for the second half of the season where the Toronto, not the Toronto Raptors, oh my God, the Sacramento Kings were looking so much better. They were the hottest team in basketball before the uh, the league got shut down. 
One difference between Bledsoe and De'Aaron Fox is that the former has a luxury of playing over two-thirds of the total minutes alongside the MVP. His burden is significantly lighter than De'Aaron Fox's third year, yada, yada. Even a heavy load. Um, he missed 17 straight games. That's what it was. He averaged 20 points per game, seven assists. Yeah, we going to ride off for him um, in just 30 minutes. I really do like De'Aaron Fox's game. One thing that really hindered him this season is his coaching. And I, I feel like a lot of the young players in the NBA go through this where, like, your front office brings in a coach that doesn't really fit your play style. Like, these Toronto Raptors, I keep saying Toronto Raptors. The Sacramento Kings were one of the fastest teams in the league last year. And then they were like, you know what, let's la have Luke Walton take over. And he completely changed that. His name is Swiper. De'Aaron Fox's name is Swiper. That boy he has the quickness. But Luke Walton got this boy playing in the half court. Oh, number 10, Ricky John Morant. That's beautiful to see Ricky John Morant here. And I cannot disagree. I cannot disagree. This team is projected to win 24 games this season. And here they are setting at the 8th seed before the NBA season comes back. I love it. I don't need to explain to you why John Morant is as good as he is. So we'll keep it going. Um, that is crazy as a rookie. As a rookie. Now, I remember before the draft, there were people out there that weren't, they weren't high on job because he has such a, a thin frame. Um, how would his lack of strength hurt him when he's guarded by some of the bigger guys? I mean, you tell me. It ain't really hurt him too much, has it? Shout out to John Morant. Number nine, Kemba Walker. Now, this is probably questionably low to a lot of y'all, but uh, Kemba Walker, again, all-star starter this season, and mostly due to the lack of, like, really elite guards in the in the Easter Conference. Um, he's had a good season, do not get me wrong, but he has went from a guy coming into the season where we all expected him, him to be the best player on the Celtics to him being the second best player and on some nights being the third. Yeah, but that's, that's okay. That's a luxury that your second best player is still an all-star caliber player. So I, I like Kemba Walker's game. Um, the second half of the season, after the All-Star break and a little bit before the All-Star break, he was starting to, to slow down his productivity. I think a lot of that had to do with him being injured. I'm going to rank that up to be an injured man. Because once he came back at the All-Star, he's like, Kemba, you shouldn't be playing right now. So I hope that once we get back to playing basketball, he's back to healthy. Um, because the Boston Celtics need him to be, you know, sometimes a closer. We've seen Kemba Walker close out a decent amount of games. And not just his NBA career, but before that as well. So shout out to him, man. Shout out to him. Numbers eight. Ice Trey. Ice Trey Young. The fact that this man is this high when he's the worst defender in the league is crazy. That just lets you know how good his offense is. Um, yeah, it's hard for me to, to deny how good Trey Young is. And I saw that with my own eyes. He was going against the Denver Nuggets. I was in attendance at one of the games. And it's just like his impact is ridiculous. When he wasn't on the court, bro, people were literally getting out of their seats. And that's when they were going to see the concession stands and stuff like that. I had like, it wasn't court side seats. I was like two rows off of court side. And I ain't spend that much money on it, I'll be honest with you. But I had the luxury of going under the tunnel to, like, this bar area. And I did it, too. When Trey Young wasn't in the game, and I think it was Brandon Goodwin was their backup at this one this before the Jeff Teague trade. I was like, all right, I'm going to go get me something to drink now because I'm not really feeling this lineup that they have going out here. So, yeah, Trey Young being top eight makes a lot of sense. Um, he Oh, here it is. He is dead last in the SPS defensive plus Real plus minus. Uh, but I one thing I can say about the Atlanta Hawks is that they're trying to build a team around him being a, a lackluster defender, bringing in Cam Radish, who looked very good defensively uh, his rookie season. Same thing with Hunter. Clint Capella is an above-average defender. So they're trying to build a team because we know that Trey Young is never going to be a plus defender with his size. So he has to be around players that are plus defenders. Number seven, Russell Westbrook. This might be – I think this is – I would have to see who's above him. I would say this is kind of low for Russell Westbrook, man. The first month or so of the season, he was dealing with the hand injury, right? I think he had, like, a his pinky or his thumb. One of the important fingers on his hand, maybe it was his middle finger, was, like, jacked up. And then once that healed, he started to play well. And and, and then also during this time, he decided, you know what, I'm just going to stop shooting threes. I'm going to just take more mid-range. I'm going to drive to the paint. And that was also the time where they decided to get rid of Clint Capella, whether Clint Capella was injured or after the trade. Everything opened up for Russell Westbrook. You know what I'm saying? So I think this is kind of low for the way Russell Westbrook has played this season. Let me see who's above him. Cal Lowry. Interesting. Interesting. Because, again, Cal Lowry is one of those on-court impactful players. Uh, cue the annual. Cal Lowry is too damn high pitch for carriers. I'm not one of them, bro. I understand why Cal Lowry would be this high on the list. 
I'd probably put Russell Westbrook one over him personally, though. I probably would. Okay, let's see who's number five. Kyrie. Cannot complain about Kyrie. When he was on the court, when he was healthy, he was a bucket. He was a bucket. So that's always what you're going to get from Kyrie Irving. You're going to get buckets. Number four, Ben Simmons. Makes sense. He's going to be an all-defensive player this year. I, I would put him on my all-defensive first team. Obviously, an elite playmaker. Um, team is better when he's on the court. Um, I mean, he's amazing to finish at the rim is what this tells me as well. I can't complain about him being the fourth best point guard in the league this season. Number three. Yes. Yes. Let's go. You may not agree with this, but I'm okay with having Chris Paul number three. Let's go, man. Turn back the clock. Chris Paul looked like he was playing for the Hornets this season. Number one in defense, not a defensive, but in like clutch time scoring, uh, clutch time percentage amongst guards. It's just a ridiculous season for another team that's projected to not make the playoffs in there. They're sitting comfortably. Um, and I, I love it. I love it. I love it. Now, the only thing is that he's, he's still making that big time bag. But still, um, Paul absolutely remains a top 10 fringe NBA player. Yes, sir. Second highest true shooting percentage of his career. And as Kevin Durant automatic for mid-range, 53% on his looks. That is ridiculous. Considering the volume of, of, of mid-range shots he takes as well. Chris Paul, my boy, up there as well. Number two, Damian Lillard, which means that number one is going to be Luka. Okay, so LeBron is not classified as a point guard this season, according to BR. Uh, Damian Lillard cannot deny this. The man had a ridiculous run for like a whole month. He was averaging over 40 points per game. It sucks for him that he had to do that because he has so many injuries on his roster with Nurkic being out, Zach Collins getting injured, um, and, and, and all the other. Rodney Hood, out for the season. They had a lot, a lot of injuries. And Damian Lillard put his backpack on. was like, you know what? We may not end up being in the playoffs, but we're going to still be in playoff contention even with all our in injuries. And number one, uh, future face of the NBA, in my opinion, Luka Doncic, second year pro, ridiculous. All right, so that is their top 10 point guards in the league. Let me know what you agree with, what you disagree with. Again, this is not my list, so don't get mad at me for the rankings. I was just reacting to it. There was some things I agree with, some things that I think are questionable, but overall a good read. I'm out.